Hey y'all, what is going on? I'm super excited about today because I've been wanting to do the video for a while. I just wanted to come out here and show y'all everything you need to know about catching freshwater eel. We'll start with where to find them. We'll move on to what setup you should be using and the type of bait that you should use. And then lastly, we'll end with how to safely land and unhook an eel. So enjoy. So step one to catching a freshwater eel. You gotta figure out, are they near you? Pretty simple. Um, today we're in Pennsylvania. I am in a creek that is fed by the Delaware River. That is super important because we're targeting the American eel. It's really similar to the European eel. It breeds in the Saragusso Sea and comes all the way up to the Americas. Obviously the European eel goes all the way to Europe. That's really the, the key difference between the two. So two things you wanna figure out when you're looking for these eels. First off, are you near the sea, right? You gotta be somewhat close to the ocean. Um, states that border the ocean are great, you know, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, et cetera. Um, and the second thing is you need to figure out is does your stream or the river that you're fishing in have any big dams? If it does, those eels aren't able to get up and migrate to the spot that you're at. That's a huge issue, especially here in Pennsylvania. Like I'm fishing the Delaware, which is great. Um, this is a creek that, again, the, the Delaware feeds and the Delaware has no, no big dams, nothing obstructs it. That's why we have eel here. Um, a lot of folks tell me, yeah, we used to see eel in the Susque Susquehanna. We don't see them anymore. And that's because the Susquehanna has some big dams that prohibit their movement. So if you do have eels in your creek or your river, your lake, what you also wanna do is look for somewhere that is rocky. So you can see here, there's a ton of rocks. You can, you can see on the outside, there's a good root spot over there. They love that cover. And underwater, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, there's a ton of rocks and they will hide inside those rocks. And it's incredible how big these eels are and um, the small little crevices that they can fit in. So that's what we'll be targeting. So this is what I use to catch freshwater eel. I'll start with my rod and reel setup. This is a uh, Shakespeare ugly stick. I think it's about five foot six. Uh, it's an ultralight. I would actually suggest using a medium rod, but I didn't have any and I loved ultralight fish. Um, as far as your pound test, you wanna use 10 pound test. That's pretty ideal. And then I use a jig head. You're gonna want something with weight. You can use a jig head, you can use a regular hook with some split shots, but I prefer jig heads. That's a 1 16th ounce. Um, works good for the crick. If you're fishing somewhere that has a little bit stronger current, you're gonna to wanna to go up a size. Gloves are a must. They're so tough to, to grip. I brought a fish gripper. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it or not, but in case I do, I'll keep it in the video. Those are always good to have. Hot dogs is the bait of choice. You want raw and uncooked. And lastly, you need pliers. Um, and I guess I should mention that I brought this towel. This is just for the eel safety. When you're landing them, they thrash around a lot. So I put this towel on, I remove the rocks that were here for the most part. I'll probably continue to remove some more. So that way when they thrash around, they won't hurt themselves. And that's what I use. All right, time to do some catching. Hot dog, like I said, it's my favorite bait for eels. And what I do is, and if you're in uh, the United States, make sure you check to see if this is legal in your state. And in Pennsylvania it is, and some states it's not, but I'll chum the water. I'll take little pieces and I'll throw it in there. The cool thing about eels, their vision is awful. Um, like it's just terrible. Where I am, this is pretty shallow. A lot of times you'll find eels in deeper water. And when you fish for these, these guys and girls, you're gonna fish for them like you do catfish. The American eels often caught when people are catfishing couple reasons one bottom feeders two they like similar baits to catfish and three a lot of times um, people fish at night for both species both species are more active at night so we're gonna chum the water and just uh, give it a couple minutes I like to throw it out in different spots because like I said these eels are living in under these rocks and uh, if I throw it out I get that sense in the water and they start coming out so we'll throw one more and then we'll just wait All right, y'all, I think I had to wait probably 30 seconds and there's two eels out there. Like I said, this is just a great eel spot and there's a, it doesn't look too big. It's okay. I know there are some big ones in here, but we'll throw it out here and just see if we can, can get, can catch one right away. Like I said, y'all, I'm trying to figure out, his tail looks like it's cut or something. Interesting. I'm just going to throw this right in front of him. Um, when you're eel fishing too, actually, funny enough, you can actually hit them. Like if you see them and you hit their tail or their, their body, they'll turn around and typically bite. Looks like he's going for it. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, there's a nicer one out there. Check the drag. A little bit bigger. There's two over here. Also, just trying to be conscientious of where there are snags. Snags are never fun. Here comes an eel. Can see him. It's a little bit of a waiting game, just hoping he finds it before the, the sunfish do. <laughs> right now the sunfish are finding it. Alright, here we go. About to eat. He's got it. Gonna wait a second. Set the hook. Got him. <laughs> All right, y'all, so when you're fighting these things, what you really want to be careful of are the rocks. And um, I try to set the hook as soon as possible to make sure that I get a clean hook set in the mouth so I can unhook them pretty easy. Like I said, we're going to use this mat here. And it's okay. These things can, can breathe out of the water for a really long time. They'll actually walk across land when they're migrating. So they're going to be a little crazy. It's going to be difficult to grab. It's okay uh, giving them a minute um, just to kind of chill out. So they'll start chilling out after a second. All right, y'all. Let me give you a quick look at this guy and then we'll let him go. This is the American eel. I'm keeping that hook in his mouth just so I've got some control. But this is, uh, yeah, my favorite fish out here. And it's an awesome fish. I mean, it's just an awesome species. There you go. So, all right, y'all. We're gonna let him go now. Obviously, he's probably, I'm probably not the biggest fan of me. He uh, slimed on me a couple times, which is pretty disgusting, but that's what eels do. Not really a way around that. So catfish fishermen or anybody who's eeling, a lot of people cut their line. No need to. These things are so easy to unhook. You can probably do it without touching them if you want. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to do it without touching them so y'all can see. Because one of the issues that I have is catfish fishermen will catch them. They don't know much about them and they won't try to unhook them. You just grab your hook with some pliers, turn it upside down, shake it, and he'll do the rest. He'll unhook this. Oh, almost got it. So I'm just going to go back and try to grab as close to that hook as possible. Give me a minute here, buddy. That's where we are. All right, shake. Give him a good little shake, and he should be able to get this out. Got it. <laughs> so unhooking them's weird. It's different than any other fish. They'll do most of the work themselves. Oh, well, time to clean off my arm. That was disgusting. I'm probably going to try to catch one or two more. I mean, you could sit here and probably catch four or five, but uh, I don't know. I guess to me, there isn't really a, a huge point of catching four or five. So we'll stop at like three. So as we continue to fish for them, I mean, I love these eels. I think they're awesome. And I wanted to make this video to educate people. So I'll share some, some cool little fun facts for you. These eels spawn, as I said earlier, in the Saragusso Sea, which is in the Caribbean. There's one right there. So that's pretty neat. And they swim up here, they live their adult lives. They make their initial journeys in spring and they'll migrate back in fall. There's actually a really big one in front of us and I'm gonna try to catch. Um, the females get significantly larger than the males. So if you catch a big eel, it's a female, just plain and simple. Looks like there's a big one right around us, come on. The other thing that's interesting about these eels, these are the same eels that people use for sushi. Um, eels coming. The thing about eel though, if you do cook it, I suggest not to just because their numbers have been in decline, mostly because of those dams that I mentioned. But if you do cook an eel, you do have to be careful because their blood is actually poisonous to humans. Okay, there's two of them. Definitely be able to catch one, just trying to catch this bigger one. It looks like we should catch it right here. Nope. Yep. Yep. Got it. He's got it. Gonna give it a second. Hook set. Oh man! He pulled the hook out. <laughs> Scared our friend off. That's on me, y'all. I should have had that big eel, but I went for the hook set and I set it. I think a little too early. So we'll get back out there. But yeah, their their blood is actually poisonous. So if you uh, 
were to consume, you know, a piece of uncooked eel and it had its, its blood on it, you could actually uh, kill a human. Fun fact. All right. There's another one down here. I think he's bigger than the last one we caught, but not bigger than the one that I just didn't catch. I dropped it right in front of him. You better bite it. Got it. No, oh, no. I'm saying oh no because this is what I was telling you all about. Dang it came off but he ran straight underneath look at that bend <laughs> so when you're hooking for these things or when you're catching these things you got to be careful so what that eel did was he ran straight under the rock it's a good good uh nice little lesson for y'all and why i recommend using a medium because i could have pulled him out probably a little better all right y'all so two misses on me the really weird thing about these eels, man, is that they are not afraid of you. So, like, if I was to go in there and walk up to it, it'd still bite, like, right in front of me. They're bizarre like that. Really the only fish that i found that'll do that. Snapping turtles will do that, too. I lost where he or she went, but right by that rock somewhere. Oh, there she is. I'm saying she because most of these are females, and I'm kind of guessing. Cool things about eels too is that they're actually born genderless, which is crazy. She sees it. She's coming. Got the bite. Eating. Eating. Got it. Took it from me. Sly. It's bait up again. <laughs> I see it out there. Dang, it looks like it's going under a rock. Wait a second, did it go through it? Let's see if we can get her to come out again. Oh, here comes one. Oh, what has it? Oh, that's an eel. What was the eel I was thinking about getting, but... An eel. I don't know the size of it yet. <laughs> that was funny. I was watching another one come in. Long but skinny. No, no, actually, pretty good size eel. Trying to keep it on top of the water so it doesn't go down and get into the rock. Actually, it's a really nice eel. <laughs> you just never know. Yeah, it's a long one. That's yeah, bigger than our first one, fatter too. Probably need a bigger, uh, oh, going a little crazy here. Probably need a bigger um, <laughs> tail. I turn on my camera here. So guys, one of the things I'm going to do for next time, I'm definitely going to bring a bigger towel because these eels are thrashing around. They're getting a little muddy, which shouldn't, shouldn't affect them. Should be fine, but still just be better if they weren't thrashing in the mud. That's a big one. Now I'm a one man production crew, which makes this job a lot more difficult if you're with friends be quite easier but this might shock you i'm one of the few eel fishermen around a lot of people don't like these things oh she's she's a little feisty this is a big eel though this is a good size i said it was skinny but i actually think it's pretty healthy and that's one of the cool things is i'll take a look at these um 
I said the Delaware River is really one of the few places that still have them. That's a good eel. It's a dark eel. Let me see, and I'll get a measurement on it. So if we can see on this tail, it's going to be a rough measurement here, ladies and gentlemen. But it goes to about right here. So later on I'll measure how far this is and we'll get a good idea for how big this eel is. I thought she was chilled out. Like I said, it's okay to give them a minute. You know, keeping these fish out of the water, obviously don't keep them out for an extremely long time, but they can breathe out of the water for a very, very, very long, long, long time. I wanna just get y'all a quick look so y'all can see our friend here. Let me move my rod out of the way and then we'll let her go. Lots of slime. Actually, they get bigger than this too. But that is the American eel. There you have it. The American eel, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's unhook our friend. Oh, I'm sorry, man. You got a little bit muddier than I would normally like, but that's okay. We're going to let you go. We're not going to eat you. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, I like to dip them a little bit. I know, I know. Obviously, it's not thrilled right now. I don't blame it. I'd be mad too if somebody just put a hook in me. And this eel doesn't understand that now, at this point, I'm trying to help it. We're so close to getting it. Got it. <laughs> See you later, bud. There we go. Let's let it go. <laughs> Man, these eels can be tough to unhook, y'all. But like I said, if you take the time, it's possible. All right, y'all, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I was trying to get a third eel, but they just stopped showing up. I waited about an hour and just nothing came. Um, I could have had three or four eels, but obviously I missed those two hook sets completely on me. I usually don't miss them, so that was kind of weird, but it is what it is. Um, as I said before, these species are awesome. Wanted to do an educational video. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, if my channel does become profitable i think i need to get that thousand subscribers so i am a ways off but i'm happy to donate any of the uh, proceeds from this video to eel conservation these are really cool fish something i believe in i want to protect see y'all